Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Kevin Flake Man interview with our guest tonight, the Cajun Gaijin. That's right, he's from Louisiana, and he is wearing a funky t-shirt. Let's show off our t-shirts today. At the same time, so we don't waste the time here. He's got a beaver t-shirt, right? Power to the beaver, all right. And I've got, well, you can see what I've got. I wish I could block you in real life. Is that what it says? I really like that one, man. Okay. All right, anyway. Um, and you're going to bring a lot of t-shirts to Japan. Oh, yes. Well, this is what we're talking to him. He's coming to Japan. I don't usually talk to new people. I usually leave that up to lower uh, YouTubers. You know, I don't have to talk to these little nobodies. But um, I leave that up to Super Shoe, right? Super Shoe. <laughs> but he's actually coming to Nagoya in about two weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Actually, three weeks from today. And he's bigger than me, so um, i got to be nice to him. I'm only, I'm only nice if people are going to hurt me. <laughs> and I'm drinking a little uh, Knob Creek tonight. Of course, uh, I don't have anything. I'm it's sorry. It's 10 a.m. where you are, right? How, what time is it? Yeah. Well, yeah, something like that. Yeah, 10. Mm. No, 11 now. 1 a.m. for me. So uh, you can drink in an hour. You can drink after noon. Okay. The reason um, I have the Cajun Gaijin on tonight is because I get a lot of emails asking me about jobs. and Where can I get a job? And, you know, I've been employed and self-employed for quite a while now. I haven't really looked. Um, I've been, I haven't had that problem for over 20 years. I just applied for my my Ajuken or my permanent visa, so I'm not going to have any problems like that anymore. However, this uh, young man has just applied and landed a job, right? Whoosh, landed a job. Yeah. So he's the man to talk to. So we're going to talk to him. Uh, first of all, give us a little background. Who are you? Um, I'm well. I'm the Cajun Gaijin, like you said. My name's Adam. Uh, my friends all call me Topher. Oh, I don't know if that matters or not. The original man. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm from Louisiana, like you said. Um, you say I'm young. I don't know if I'm young so much. I'm 28 now. 28. Uh, I was 22 when I came over. I guess you're a little older. Than yeah, me. right. I'm, I'm pushing the boundary, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not old enough to be an Oyaji yet. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> Someday soon. <laughs> well, it depends on who you're talking to. What's your, yeah, uh, what's your college background or, or your educational background? I graduated in 05 mm -hmm. uh, from Northwestern State University here in Louisiana. With a? BA in psychology. Okay. And this is important because this is one of the requirements right. to get a job in here. So we're going to do this video from mostly an American point of view. I realize that if you're from Canada, New Zealand, um, uh, Germany, for example, that you guys have like working holiday visas, but we're not going to cover that. Today we're talking about basically getting a job as a, as a language instructor in Japan and what you need. So please uh, run down the line. What do we need to get a job as a language instructor in Japan if you're from one of those countries? Um, for a I, visa. Also, for last year in visa. September... Mm -hmm. It may not be necessary, but I also got my uh, TESOL certification, uh -huh. um, okay. a hundred hour TESOL cert certification. It's not necessary, but I would highly recommend it. Okay. And that was expensive um, though, right? Mine was. There probably are cheaper ones, but I got an in-class where it's not online. I actually went mm -hmm. in-class um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I, can I plug? Yeah, sure. The, the school? Yeah, okay, I got mine through Oxford Seminars. Okay. And uh, it was really comprehensive. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Right. They give you the books um, included in the fee. Um, they have them all over the country. Um, in fact, all over the world. Uh, I don't know. It was really good. And I would say, from what you told me about that program, <laughs> one of the best things that they offered was uh, contacts at the end. Yeah. Correct? Right? Yes. They have a job board um, right. that once you are done, you can look through. And uh, all over the world, really, but I was interested in the Japan part. Right. Um, I can look. All over the world. Oh, I didn't yes. Know. Oh, cool. I can look um, in Japan, specifically, say, um, a small city. Well, we'll go in Nagoya, for instance. Um, and I can look and see all the English schools in Nagoya. Um, and I could apply directly to a school if I wanted to in a certain area of Nagoya. So if I knew the name of your school, for instance, the contact info might be on that job board. Probably. The email, website. Uh, phone number, right. so I could, I could call the school directly. Okay, cool. Well, what are the, what are the basic um, requirements to getting a job as an English teacher or language instructor in Japan? Um, that's really about it, to be honest with you. The the BA. Well, you you gave me a list here, remember? Well, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. I don't I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I mean, I can Should pull I it up. for it? Okay, he sent me, sure, he sent me a list. All right, he he did prepare actually. Okay, you got a BA or BS. You got to be a native English speaker, unfortunately. Right, of right? course. A lot yes. of you say, a lot of you say, oh, I have a degree in English. Not twelve. Enough native. Twelve years of school. Twelve years of school. Okay, got to go to high school. You have to have a nice personality. Yeah, I okay. suppose. Well, that's you know, that's subjective. I think Eon, or I think it was Eon, they put you. They have this kind of um, weird interview process where they put a bunch of foreigners in a room, and then they invite some of those back. 
Uh, I, I know people who've gotten past those stages who've actually gotten jobs that way. And yeah, they put like 20 or 30 people in a room and then only a few of those are invited back and they, they look at the way you interact with other foreigners and they pick out the friendliest and gankiest one. So that's why a lot of uh, English teachers are like, hey, how you doing? Kind of attitude, not, right? not a huge fan. Yeah, um, but you know, it's it, there is there. That's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's good for the yeah. shy Japanese, I suppose, to be Definitely. really outgoing, right? If you're really shy and they're really shy, you're not going to get any interaction going. Um, and later interaction. Okay, how you doing? Um, hardworking, dependable. Yes. Yes. Um, dependable. Let me stress right now. I'm not going to mention why I'm saying this right now, but I think you and both and I both know why. You got to be on time. Yeah, that was going to say punctual. Punctuality is not to be underestimated. Here's something else interesting. If you are going to be late to any kind of meeting in Japan, always overestimate the amount of time you're going to be late. For example, if you're going to be five minutes late, say you're going to be ten minutes late and then arrive apparently only five minutes late because you estimated ten. That kind of thing is recommended. But most of all, don't be late. Never be late. Never be late for first meeting. If you're late for the interview, don't even go. No. Don't even go, or unless, unless you got a really damn good reason. Um, yeah, it's horrible to be late. Uh, you got to have a passport, of course. Yeah. And no felony charges. Now, here's something people ask me about. I don't know how to look this up. I guess I could go to immigration next time and ask. How could they, can they tell if you've had a felony? Is that on some kind of list? Um. Well, a lot of like I had to turn in a background check. Uh-huh. Um. But it wasn't an FBI background check. Um, you pay for a back background check. Who does the background? I did. Check? Uh, my local jurisdiction. Really? You can pay for a background check? Yeah, of course. You, know, you can order an FBI background check as well, but it takes about a month. Really? Yes, sir. Wow. Well, yeah. How, well, how much, how much did it cost? I didn't order it. Well, I, like I said, I didn't order an FBI background check because it wasn't necessary for my job. But did, did um, but yours cost anything? Or was $5. $5, okay. Huh. I wonder if, I, I wonder if I'm clean. I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> but I, I, I don't have anything. That, uh... All right. Cool. Okay, good. Um, other skills he mentioned, and I don't actually understand some of them, which is a great opportunity for him to expound on these. You said thick-skinned. Why do you say thick-skinned? Um, well, I say thick-skinned because um, of maybe misinterpretations. Um, maybe the way you say something might be mis- like misinterpreted. The way someone says something, you might misinterpret. Um, mm. Racism, um, which I don't think is going to be a problem for me, but... Suppose it does exist. Are so you, are you are you black by any chance? I can't really. I don't see color. So. No. I, no. Okay. <laughs> no, but well, I mean, it's not it's not a black white thing or a brown thing. It's just it's just a foreigner thing. Yeah. You know? Which is not racism. It's xenophobia, and it's mostly okay. fear of the unknown. Right. Right. Sure. Okay. Uh, well, so a big topic. just that, jump off that right away. <laughs> of course. Right. Just in general, though. So okay. if you're thick skinned, um, then the things won't you won't be hurt by. Just people looking at you differently. Right. Yeah. A good point. If you're really sensitive about people looking at you, no, someone. If you, you know, someone didn't sit next to me in the subway, then this is not a country for you because it's going to happen. Right. You said tough. That kind of feels like the same thing. Right. Yeah. That's, that's basically. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, you know what though? I would say mentally tough. Like if you're the kind of person who who um, who needs a hamburger and can't eat any different food. That's not, this is not a good country for you. I think. Well, yeah, it could uh, be expensive. You can find all that stuff, but it's going to be expensive. Number one. Yeah. And you're just not going to have a good time when everything else you go out to Izakayas and everything's going to be things that you can't eat. Cause you're a wimp when it comes to eating food. So of course. Tough and flexible. Yeah. That in that kind of, you also wrote, wrote flexible. I would say, yeah, both tough and flexible that way. Um, then you said, be prepared for the unexpected. How do you do that? Um, pulling some Zen trick on me here. Yeah, I think that comes with the flexible, though. Yeah. Hmm. Be prepared I, for the unexpected. Well, um, carry a compass. Yeah, I guess you know. Well, I, I was in Boy Scouts <laughs> uh, whenever I was young, so we, you know the thing was be prepared. Right. Um. So I don't know. I guess you, whenever you, whenever I go, like I have, I think n- Japan. I'm not naive, mm-hmm. but I have like these maybe rose-colored glasses. Right. So, but whenever I go, I understand it's not all peaches and cream, you know, it's not rose colored glasses. Right. So, okay. I, I understand it's not going to be what I expect it to be. It's not anime and manga, you know. Right. Well, good. So, yeah, it's, not. Um, I, it's, you know, I understand it's not going to be what I expect it to be. That's but, basically what it boils down to. The good thing, though, is that you guys now are coming over, seeing, having at least the internet and having YouTube to see the world yeah, of course. through. Because when I came over, there was none of that, and I really had no clue. 
I thought everyone was going to be wearing kimono. <laughs> and I thought the girls were going to be all uh, virginal, you know, statues of uh, ethical morality. And well, I was happily uh, mistaken. People um, down here, when I talk to them, they're like, you know, they eat so many soybeans, they say down there, it actually yeah, goes this way instead of this I way. Heard that. I heard that one in junior high school. <laughs> Wow, that's still around, that room. That room. It's still around, unfortunately. Another one, very important one, be self-resilient. Self -re rely on yourself, basically. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, <clears throat> get used to being alone in the beginning until you find some friends, uh, and it's going to be lonely, but you'll, be, you'll get out of it, you know? Uh, use the time when you're alone to study. Uh, be fine yeah. in Japanese, right? I have, I have about this much. Japanese? Yeah, unfortunately. Really? You haven't yeah, been watching my Japanese for morons? I do. Okay. I, right. Unfortunately, I do. I do watch it. No, Go back I said and unfortunately. Watch the, first 65. Oops. watch the first 65 that Tomoko and I made. No, I do. Um, and that's that's where I'm getting a lot of it from. So okay. it'd be good to watch the channel because I'm going over there as like fresh. You know, okay. I'm studying my katakana. I'm studying hiragana. And well, don't so. Don't feel bad because actually I came over with almost nothing. I knew like a couple words and a sentence pattern. I, yeah. knew the, I knew the sentence pattern, you know, how the sentence pattern works. And, and then if I knew, you know, dog, tree, and apple. That's about it. So. Um, Inu, Ki, and Ringo. But okay. Number six, you said have fun. All work and no play makes for a very long day. Uh, yeah, you will have lots of opportunity for fun. There's a lot of foreign, uh, in most big cities, there are gaijin bars where the gaijin go and they hang out. There's a, in Nagoya, we have the hub. I'm pretty sure it's in Tokyo. Yeah, they have one in Tokyo too. They have places where gaijin will congregate to, to mingle with each other and meet each other and, you know, speak English with each other normally because you get tired after speaking really slow English all day. You want to speak normally and keep your English up. So that's good. Okay, so ba that's the basic stuff, okay? You're basically going to be fine. Other things, uh, quickly to mention, things you should bring over, right? And what, what, what are you, how are you preparing to come over? Um, what have you bought? I bought a can opener. <laughs> okay. Actually, they're but not that, that but Matt here. But Super Shoe told me that. Yeah, he said the can opener is stuck in Japan. Yeah, they suck in coming. They do have the good ones, but they're expensive. Yeah, you know, we got to go to a, to an import shop, and I, we we do have to go. And the first time we bought one, I think it was uh, was it this wife or my ex girlfriend? I don't know. But he's like, "Whoa, what is that? They've never seen those little can openers, right? They got the, the, these kind, you know." Yeah. Oh no, 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 no. Um, I to me, I've I've got like, I don't know. I'm pretty basic. Um, I'm a big guy, like you mm -hmm. said. So it's shirts, pants, shoes, yeah, socks. Yeah, something that I we just before this we talked about that he's got. He's got a, two suits. I would say one suit's enough. Some white shirts, one black tie for if, emergency funeral if you have to, <laughs> and one white tie for emergency uh, wedding if you get invited because those are expensive, and they're just cheap to buy. It's just cheaper to buy in the states, right? But yeah. yeah. Have a white white shirts for business. Yeah. And I don't have any white shirts, so I have to buy one. I'm yeah. more of a flashy kind of. So if you, and yeah. if you go out at night, you know the flashy shirts are fine for discos and stuff like that. Um, you know. <laughs> This goes. Uh, <laughs> um, on a on, for a practical purpose, let's let's get practical. Um, buy deodorant. Okay. Buy deodorant. If you're going to be sexually active, buy your sexually uh, your birth birth control products back in your country. Um, just because not just because they don't have them here, they do have them. They might. They're small. Uh, not not just that. Um, They're too small here, man. Dude, come on. <laughs> You know what? Okay. You're losing possibility of subscribers with that attitude. No one wants to know how big that thing is. Okay, keep it. Yeah. Control it. Don't, don't take it out. Okay. All right. Okay. We believe you. <laughs> However, um, no. Be, just when you go to a drugstore, any actually anything that you buy in a drugstore in the states, buy it in the states because when you yeah. come here, you're not going to know where it is, right? And actually, oh, you have course, a very yeah. special. Uh, you <clears throat> talk about your special condition. Oh uh, yeah, I have yeah. Oh, you want to talk about it now? Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, I actually I have epilepsy, uh, seizures caused by um, strobe lights and video games, and I like video games. Oh, really? So, wow. yeah, um, it's unfortunate for I'm me. I'm surprised your, head, your headphones don't give you uh, grand mal seizures because those are really bright and flashy. <laughs> but actually, yeah, you like you're that? bringing medicine over, right? You're bringing um, medicine over. I am. And you have um, prescription and medicine, and you have some I special am. information about that. I think the viewers I do. appreciate. I have a video um, on the Yake and Shume. I guess if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm not sure. Oh, um, right, right. But you're only allowed to bring one month of prescription medicine. Um, and 
you have to have this special paperwork if you want to bring more. I actually just sent it off a couple of days ago. Um, it hopefully it's only going to take about a week to get there, a week to get back because they said they they process it really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's pretty simple paperwork. Um, it's all in Japanese, but it has like some English subtitles mm-hmm. on the paperwork. Okay. Um, and I want to bring about six months supply with me yeah. because I don't think I'm going to be able to get to a doctor in the first month because right. I won't get paid obviously for the first month. Right. Um, so I'm sure most people know that at this point. Oh, um, yes. But yeah. I'll also be in training for the first two weeks right. before I even move to my hometown. Um, and I won't get my alien registration card until you know the third week I'll be living there. I won't get my um, you know my bank account. I won't get my cell phone. I won't get any of that stuff for the first three weeks. So I won't even be able to go to a doctor or get you know my actual insurance or anything like that until my third or fourth week living there. Right. Or do we even find a doctor? So you know it's going to be very difficult. Right. So I want to have at least six months of medicine to give me a nice buffer yes. to be able to take care of that stuff. And what is the thing you need to, you need to get? It's called a Yaku what? Um, Yakan, Yakan Shome. Yakan Shome. Okay, and look on his channel. We'll leave links below to those videos. Yeah. You can go I have a video I have a video all about it. Just right. uh, one okay. video all about it. Okay. So and Lots yeah. of very good links. And speaking of other videos, uh, he's got a great series of how he found his job and then what other and other jobs that he applied for. Uh, so check those out. However, I will say that if you're coming to Japan, um, do not make the mistake of blogging anything. I, in fact, I would say avoid men- mentioning your company name in your videos until you are sure you've got that job locked down. Uh, there was someone else recently here on YouTube who talked, uh, actually kind of bad about his company that he just got this job, you know. And I was kind of worried, like, dude, that guy's going to get fired over a YouTube video, which is just, just ridiculous. So if it gonna, won't necessarily happen, but there's a chance, a small chance. Right, and you really don't you want to lose know. it over no. a YouTube video. So, um, Speaking of other vloggers, uh, who are some of, your, of the people that you follow that help you find, uh, well, yeah, help you get the information you needed to come to Japan? I know you have a couple uh, in mind. Who... My, my biggest inspiration was uh, Super Shoe. Um, I've been following him for more than a year now. I mean, he was like the actual inspiration for me to finally just, just do it, Great. you know? He was one of those people that was like, I was like, you know, it really is possible. There's no reason why you can't do it. Right. Um, How did you find him? YouTube on accident. You know, right. I was just Googling. I was actually Googling Interact, mm-hmm. um, and I found him. Um, did he work and for then, Interac- He worked for Interact before. At one point, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so he has good information on the topic. Um, and then um, there's also recently, I guess about maybe six months ago, uh, Lauren Nihon. Mm. Um she has good information on Interact as well. And other schools uh, as well. She talks about it quite a few yeah, schools. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, good, good links. She, we'll put those in the bottom, the uh, links to these channels. You can check them out. Go to yeah. their channels and do searches on their channels for, you know, uh, working in Japan, jobs, teaching, right. et cetera. You'll find something. Yeah. And um, Mexican Geisha, he's a really cool guy. He's he cool. also just came to Japan. Right. Um, I would recommend him uh, as well. I mean, he's a, he's a really nice he's, guy. Really he's, cool to he's watch. He's a good guy to see, especially because he's just come over. So you're going to see what problems he's and facing he's cool because he's a he i'm not a vegan but he's a vegan so oh. it's interesting to watch his struggle in wow. with that yeah. you know i guess yeah. i say struggle because it's you know be a because he's a vegan Japan. yeah right, right. And, pe- and you have to explain it every time too so yeah. Yeah, if you're a vegan or vegetarian in japan it's gonna be tough yeah um if you like eating live things and raw things it's a great com- country for you <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't mind trying lots of stuff, so it'll be right. cool for me. So we got Lauren Nihon. Uh, anyone else? I think there was someone else you told me about. Uh, I forgot his name. Someone you had never heard of, who jobs in Japan, or you told me some other guy you were watching earlier. Who was I name? watching? Um, a I new person you weren't sure of his name. My father married to a Japanese. Married. Oh, anyway. um, there's a girl. My husband is Japanese. My husband is Japanese. Is that that's the yeah. username? Okay. She she has a lot of good information as well. Um. She has, she has a lot of information, actually. She's in. She's living in Japan now. Um, she has a lot of information um, okay, for people who want to find okay. stuff. Okay, that's just that's, everyday living tips. And she, and she talks. She has some information about banks as well. But that reminds me, um, things paperwork that you should bring over for sure. Of course, your passport. You're not going to get over the passport. Bring a. I had. A, I needed a certified copy of my degree when I came over, just like so a show uh-huh. to people, or the actual really? degree if you don't want to leave. Bring the degree. Sure. You're bringing a degree? You're bringing a no, degree? No, no. Uh, I wasn't even planning on that. I didn't think about that. I think you should bring a, bring a certified copy of your degree because if for some reason the job goes south or you want to jump careers, you want to have a copy of that. Bring a, co- bring a copy of, of your birth certificate. 
bring your driver's license, even though you probably won't be able to lose, use it. Uh, get an inter international driver's license if you can. I just send the paperwork off for that too. Great. Um, all the a birth certificate, driver's license, anything official that is important in your life in the states. Bring a certified copy or the original with you. So you TESOL can, certification. TESOL certification, of course, all that stuff. Any, if you got any of that stuff, bring it over. Letters of recommendation. Mm. Even though you've already got a job lined up, if that falls through, and uh, if you've got a letter of recommendation from your university, then you can mm. use that to put, yeah, well. Yeah. They've all retired. Okay. <laughs> well, but for anyone else watching this, if you can get a letter of recommendation from your local whoever, any 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 person of distinction in your neighborhood or in your community, then get it. You know, <clears throat> even if the fact that you brought it to Japan, even if they don't know who that person is, will mean something. It means that you cared enough to to get one, right? And who's gonna make that stuff up anyway, right? So bring that stuff with you. A uh, resumes, of course, right? All that kind of stuff. I think that's basically it, right? And uh, and yeah. if you're coming to Nagoya, I like Knob Creek uh, whiskey. Great. Knob Creek. Is it bourbon? Is it bourbon? Knob I guess. Creek. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm, not a, I'm not a bourbon fan. It's good I stuff. I like scotch. It's from Tennessee. But... I like I like scotch and vodka. <laughs> well, you'll find a lot of that here. The liquor's not that not expensive, but the, the, the important stuff is. So, yeah. So, actually, if you're coming over and you have some special uh, liquid <laughs> courage that you like, then bring that over um, as well. Anyway, I would say travel as light as possible, though, because you're going to be moving around in the beginning. Unless, That's some really cool get luggage. the things that you need, like your, like your, if especially if you're a big guy like you are, make sure you get the so things that you cannot buy here. Because if you're a big guy, it's going to be hard to buy things like shoes, running shoes, tennis shoes, work shoes, anything, any, anything your size can be tough. So, yeah. Anything else you want to add? Um, persistence. Okay, persistence so is key. You you actually had a had a, quite a bit of struggle finding a job, didn't you? Well, I started the whole process a year ago, exactly a year from this month. I decided I was moving. Um, I got a job. I started saving money on that job mm -hmm. to come. And then I got my certification in September. And right before that, I started applying to jobs. And how much um, money so have you I would say like in the year, October. If you don't mind me asking. Um, in, in March ish, I started putting money towards a car. I bought a car for cheap. I imported a motor from Japan. I imported a, some parts from Japan. And I built the car. Jump, I turned around and sold the, that car. Jump to the chase. Okay, how, how much? Yeah, is it? I sold that car, and so I put about five grand in the bank. Okay. And um, that five grand is actually what's going to be paying for most of my trip um, to come to Japan. Really. Listen, let me tell you, someone who employs teachers, I've I've brought teachers over from the states who come over literally with two hundred dollars in their pockets. I mean, people who seem completely normal and reasonable. Get them on the phone. You just think that they're going to know that you can't come over with that. Two hundred dollars in the pockets, no money at all. Um, there's a guy named the German guy on my channel right now who some people are criticizing because he doesn't have enough money, right? You never know, you know, how much money you're going to need. So the more the merrier when it comes to the bills. So I got mad respect for him for doing what he wants to yeah, do. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I'm not criticizing him, but if you have if you have the means and the opportunity to bring over more money <laughs> than either of those two people I just mentioned, then do it because you can never have I too much money. I think five grand is probably the minimum I recommend. Fine. I came over, I think, with two, and that was twenty years ago. Yeah, but I was lucky because I had a homestay homestay family as well. So, well, like I said, you don't get paid for the first month. Right. Yeah. You got to. You got to travel. About that. That's true. Yeah, traveling. And you got to eat. Expensive. Eating can get by pretty cheap, but um, but if you're yeah, if you're smoking or drinking, you better put a lid on that uh, vice for yeah. a while. Anyway, I I, I'm sure we've gone way over my. Yeah, yeah uh, my I'm sorry. Original... No, no, no. It's it's both of us. We both talk too much. But, yeah. But if anyone has any more questions, I would say the man to contact is this guy. I'm sure he's going to be really busy in the next few weeks moving. But but if you got some questions uh, and he's got the time, I'm sure he'll be kind enough to return to uh, to extend his karmic energy towards you because he's got a lot from other people in, in the past, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks everyone, everyone for watching. Remember, this is the the uh, Cajun, Cajun Gaijin. 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 Adam, and thanks yeah. a lot for uh, talking with me tonight. Uh, thank you. I'll talk to you very talk to you all very soon. And remember to check out his channel, right? And check out all the links below. We got links to places where you can actually get jobs if you're looking for jobs. Oh, I almost forgot one of the most important things. Busan Kevin no. just put out a book on how to get jobs in Japan. And sure enough. Sure, yeah, so definitely check that out. Jesus Christ. Boost, Kevin, <clears throat> I'm really sorry I didn't mention that at first. That's, yeah. That's one of the top things, yeah. So I actually need to read it. I haven't had a chance to sit down and read it. I got it too. I'm, I'm reading it right now.
But I'm, I'm gonna have him on the show too. So. Yeah, that'd be good. Thanks for watching, everyone. Talk to you guys soon. Superman. Later. Spider Man. Ultraman.